Good afternoon and welcome to Carnation Crafts. We are live in the Carnation Crafts TV studios and we're here today for the launch of the digital market, which is just super, super exciting. We had a really good show this morning and it has been crazy, crazy busy, which we knew was going to happen. But we wanted to put one on this afternoon for those who can't watch the morning shows because often people can't catch, you know, one of the other times. So for those of you who are just joining us, a massive warm welcome. The digital market launch is all about a new set of content that will be available on the Carnation Crafts website, which is www.carnationcrafts.co.uk. And basically on there, you have got two new sections. At the top, you'll see digital market. When you click onto digital market, it's got two options at the bottom there, commercial artwork and Carnation original. Originals. We're going to focus on Carnation Originals, but I want to talk you through commercial artwork so you know what it is, why it's there and how it can be used. Although obviously you can use it for what, anything you like. I will say hello to Joanne. Hello, lovely. Hello, Sue. How are you doing, ladies? Are you OK? So the commercial artwork section is a completely separate little thing. So basically this is artwork that is not done by Carnation Crafts. What they've done is bought a license for a certain amount of artwork and we know those licenses are incredibly expensive and this is why most people who produce dyes produce their own artwork because it's very expensive to have those licenses. So Carnation decided they would get the license and they would sell to you guys at a very cheap price so it, it just makes it easier all around for everybody but they haven't just bought you know anything over they've gone through it all very very carefully to check that everything matches with carnation so it's done by collections and you get like a, a big selection, I think there's 16 sheets or so for each collection that you're getting. Uh, and they're like four quid, 3.99, super cheap. And you download them to your computer. So all good. Um, June Smith says, good afternoon, Carla and Taz and everyone. I'm just downloading my order. They look really amazing. I'm so excited. I'm so glad to hear it. Um, so basically what this is, is just a way of you getting other artwork that will blend naturally and uh, will work with all of your Carnation collections and will work independently as well. They've been very careful about how they've chosen it. So you've got landscapes, you've got uh, shabby chic backgrounds, vintage backgrounds, Christmas backgrounds. There's loads of different things, but it all works with the collections that you've got from Carnations. But I reiterate again, this is not artwork that is produced by Carnation themselves. Uh, this is something that they have the license and they are able to sell it to you at a very cheap price, but it is not their own artwork. So just to be very clear about that. However, the Carnation original section is Carnation's own stuff. So on the Carnation original sections, what you'll see are things like the USBs and you can buy the USB as a whole as a download now instead of actually buying the dongle of the USB, the main, you know, hardware, if you like, of that. Uh, you uh, can also buy independent files that you can get from the USB. So they've split them up. You can see how they're broken down there. What they're doing today, because it's the launch today, is that they're doing a deal of the day, which means you can get three for two, which is awesome. But there's only eight hours or just under nine hours left. And then that will revert back to normal. So if you are going to buy from the digital marketplace, today is the day to do it. So on the Carnation one, the original, Carnation original section of there, you are able to download individual files from USBs. The plan going forward is that more and more will be added to these as time goes forward. If you don't want to buy a full USB, but you do sit there and think, I wonder if Carnation, for instance, have got a handbag uh, that I can use on my cutting machine. You can absolutely go in there, have a look and you'll find it. You can download it and then you can use it on your cutting machine. So we're going to have a look. Look at all the nested look. They've got all their nesteds there. All the shabbies. I love the shabbies. They're my favourite. Um, quick cards. We're going to have a look at quick cards today, Miss Tiz Taz. We're looking at quick cards today. $2.99. $2 for quick cards. Um, 
Helen says, saw the first part earlier, went on and bought some and downloaded. It's a bargain at three for two. It really is, Helen. I th this is the thing. Listen, you know, we can buy the USBs and I think the USBs are amazing. You know I love digital crafting so much. So this has just opened up this whole new world for me, which I'm so impressed with. And I'm really excited that they're doing it because, listen, we don't all have the, f the same financial capabilities. So if you can't afford a USB, but you'd really like some of the files off it, you can piecemeal it now. You can get what you need to get as you get them. And I like that a lot. Again, more scope for crafting independently, doing what we want to do as artists. That's important. Um, and, and it's enjoyable, isn't it? And I think the thing with digital crafting is we get to change sizes we get to add our own little pieces as well there's a real power in it and i like that a lot so let's start i'm going to focus and was focusing this morning on the usb the christmas usb um, as our main focus point and all the elements are on the website there independently or as a full usb entirely up to you so let's have a look the first thing we're going to do you've seen these before on the usbs but i do want to keep reiterating these because actually it was only a couple of usbs ago that i started to think oh i should probably explain these and so i do want to get the point across as much as i can that these come with your USB. I'm going to show you how to get them, but print them out. My advice to you is print them out, pop them in a little folder, and then keep them all individually in folders so that whenever you're going through, you can look and you can go, that's my Carnation Christmas USB, and this is every single SVG that I've got on that USB and I can find at any given time. And there are three pages full. So it's just a really good look at what it is. Now, the reason we've got that there and the reason that that's important is if I take my stack here of files that I printed yesterday that all come from this USB and we can look at, say this, which I think is lovely. So I can have a look at this and I can say, well, I really like that. That's what I'm going to cut. This is brilliant. I don't know what it's called. And when I go in my files, it doesn't tell me what it's called on the USB. How am I going to pair it? I don't know what it is in order to find it on my USB. So all you need to do is just whip through here. I can see it how you're here, hiding away. I can look and say it's called Christmas treats. I can then find that on my USB. Miss Taz is pulling a face because I think she's just seeing the dog. She's so excited by the dog. Her little face. It's cute. It is cute, isn't it? Just if, if anyone's watching that knows me... Um... A dog would be great for Christmas. Miss Taz, you cannot have any more pets. We are not to buy Miss Taz a dog for Christmas. Little Dachshund, and I'd call it Bert. A little Dachshund called Bert. Is that what you would Boy have? Or girl. Okay. Joanne says, digital downloads are the future. There's no urgency to buy because the stock never runs out, so no one loses out. Hello, Taz and everyone else. Sorry, I always forget that Taz is here uh, too until the filming starts. She is, I always forget she's here as well. I don't because she just shouts at me constantly. Um, June says, Carla, have you printed these on the Pro 120 Pro Papers? I think they are, but not sure. Alison says, adopt. Adopt a pet. Always. She says always, Taz is like a massive animal fan. Uh, so yes, as am I, and all of my animals are adopted. So to answer your question, June, have I printed them on the 120 Pro Print? No, I have printed them on Pro Print, but I did them on 220. And the reason I did them on 220 is to explain uh, as best I can. Whenever I print a vignette, I always print my vignettes on 120 Pro Print because I always do the mirrored. Um, so the ones with the black line down and that's for the dies. So it becomes 240 because when I am, we all craft differently. So I'm not telling you to do what I do, not even by a long shot, but I will explain what I do in case that is of use to you guys at home. When I'm taking a, a piece that's cut or used, as you see here, if I do this in a 120, I'm not gonna be able to manipulate it in the same way because structurally the paper doesn't have the same amount of fibers per gram, if you like, per gram square, square meter. So that's what GSM stands for. So it won't have the same amount of structure to the paper um, because it'll only have 120 rather than 220, which I'm using here. When I've got better structure, it means I can manipulate the paper more and it will be, it will hold itself better. 
So that's why I use a 220. That being said, if you've got no intention of sculpting or doing anything with them other than cutting them out and decoupaging or gluing and placing, which is how a lot of crafters work, then absolutely 120 would be fine. I just prefer mine to be a bit more solid, um, but it is personal preference, absolutely. So, so um, that's the best I can say, June, is just that's my preference. So I hope that helps. Um, but 120 is absolutely fine if you're just decoupaging and you can do some manipulation with it too. But for me, I use the 220 for, I always use 220 for these. Um, Joanne says, Carla, is 170 sturdy enough to mold? Yep. Um, Listen, 120 is sturdy enough to mould. It's about how much you're going to kind of batter it, if you like. And I, I like to really go to town, especially if I've got those detail cuts where I've got all of those little cut lines and I can do all of those things with it. I'm going to be more inclined to want to work with it for longer. But a lot of people don't craft that way. Um, so I think it's, it's something... My advice is test it a little bit. So I'd be I'd be inclined just as much to just try it on a piece of pin, printer paper, which is I think usually 80 GSM, cut it out and try sculpting that. Then go to a higher level, sculpt that and just see where your preference lies because your, your preference will be different to mine. I'm very heavy handed. Um, I'm not a delicate crafter, you'll all be surprised to know. And so consequently, I'm a little bit more, um, I need the paper to be more forgiving and it is for me when it's a 220. Um, <clears throat> Fifi says, I can print from USB but do not own a scan and cut. Will I be able to download and print these files? You can absolutely download and print them. Cutting them out, uh, you wouldn't be able to use your die with them because they won't be the right size. Um, so if you're using them, you could fussy cut them. You could fussy cut them, um, but it depends what you're doing. Obviously, if you're going to fussy cut something like the Christmas pudding, no problem at all, won't take you any time. But if you're going to try and fussy cut something like that, you're going to be there for quite some time. So, you know, it depends what you're doing. As for the backing papers, absolutely fine to print from whichever. So I hope that helps, Fifi. Um, you can use the silhouette and you can use the Cricut as well. You don't need to just do it on the Brother Scan and Cut. We just demonstrate with the Scan and Cut. It's just what we use to do the demonstrations on. And as I learn and um, we do sort of more work, I will learn on the other machines. So how do we get it from the Carnation Crafts website onto the Scan and Cut? That's the question that I want to answer. Uh, we did answer it this morning, but for those of you who are new to viewing this afternoon, let's have a look at that because there are different ways of doing it and some are easier than others. So I'm going to bring my laptop in and I'm going to take you off. Um, Alison, the pretty shabby rectangles, is it $2.99 and you get all the sizes? I believe so, yes. Um... Lorraine says, I hope I can see all of this. I missed half of this morning's, but I am at work. Shh. We'll stay quiet. So you've got your, um, I, can you see this on the overhead, Taz? Is it working? So I've got Facebook on it at the minute and, and me. Hi. So we're going to take this over to Canvas Workspace, first of all. Just make sure this loads. So that's Canvas Workspace. So to get that, all you need to do is go to Google and type in Brother Canvas Workspace. Um, and it can go from there. Uh, obviously this is for the scan and cut. If you're using a different machine, you will use a theirs. Now let me just close this down, just minimize it. So Taz is gonna take you to the website and she will show you where you go to Carnation Originals. And from there, you select whatever it is that you want to purchase. So for this, we will go for the Carnation Christmas USB because just because you scroll past it and I know it'll drive her nuts. So we're going to go for that one. <laughs> I was going for the dog. Well, you go for, oh, you can go for the dog. Go on, you have some fun. You go for the dog. It's too, too late now. It's too late now. Okay, she's not speaking to me anymore. So there you go. You got it there. And obviously you proceed to check out. Now we can't go any further. Obviously, Miss Taz can't go any further at this point. But you know what you're doing there. You've been and got your vignettes before for Carnation. So you know what happens. It downloads to your computer. And then we get to the stage where I have it on my laptop here and there is a file. It's not the best lighting for you here, but I'll get it so it doesn't glint. You can just see my face. I do apologize. There's a file here, which is my Carnation uh, USB. So this is the full Christmas USB. I've got it sitting there. I'll just open that for you. 
and you'll see here I've got the content which is the PDF that I showed you a minute ago which has got all the thumbnails of everything that is on here. You've got your papers which are all your backing papers, everything else that you would get on the USB and then you've got ECM files. So this used to be called SVG on uh, some but it's ECM because it's electronic cutting machine files because oh yeah, Carnation have brilliantly given you two sets now. So if I go into baubles just to look it will say DXF and SVG. SVG we know as brother files. The DF, uh, DXF is for silhouette. So you now have the two options, which is brilliant, right? We just went a step further. This is why digital marketing, digital artwork is becoming so important. We are catering all the for all the units, so it helps. So that's that folder. It's downloaded on my computer. I've just got it on my desktop. You might have it in downloads, whichever way. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Brother Canvas workspace. Now you need to have your, um, your scan and cut turned on. Are you laughing because my face is reflected in there? My big face is looking like a big moon face. <laughs> it's not my fault. Uh, basically you need to have your scan and cut turned on. If it's not turned on, obviously it won't receive Wi-Fi and you need it to re receive Wi-Fi. Uh, a scan and cut can have Wi-Fi and it will work independently. Most of you know that. You just go into the settings and pop your Wi-Fi password in there and it will accept Wi-Fi. So we're going to get my laptop to talk to my scan and cut. I don't need a plug between the two. I've just got them both set up on Wi-Fi. So what I'm going to do, go here, I'm going to try and close this down again a little bit. I have to excuse my face so you can see. Right, we've got here a little icon that says SVG. We're going to click that and it'll say which file do you want to import and it's only going to accept an SVG. So if I go back here, well I can go to, let's have a look, I know that that's sitting on my desktop so let's go to desktop because I know that's where my folder is, there it is and I can click in, I can go to my files and they're all there and I can choose which one I want to do. So it doesn't really matter, we'll go for a hint of pine and we'll go to SVG and you can see here I've got my PDFs, which are the vignettes, and then I've got things like my detail cut, and I've got the mats because they come with their own mats and layers, and I've got my speed cut, which is down here. So we'll open that one for now. Doesn't matter which one I do, and I'm going to press upload. Now it did spit me out this morning. It was not enjoying life, uh, and you will occasionally have those technological issues. So we just kind of, we just kind of accept them, don't we? Miss Taz, is my scan and cut on? Can you see? Is it on or is it off? Has it gone to sleep? I think it's gone to sleep. Miss Taz is just looking for us. Is it back on? No. Just press the on off button at the top just quickly. It should come back on. There you go. Is it on? Okay to retrieve and resume previous memory. Okay or cancel? Just press okay. She's very good. She's like my little helper. Then you need to press home. And then it'll say delete all patterns and you say OK. I'm gonna have to and that takes me where I need to be. Okay. Are we there? She, she keeps asking for pay rises to be my carer. They won't give it to her. <laughs> so you've got this on your screen here where you've got those trees. We need to get that onto the scan and cut. So in order to get that to the scan and cut, what we're going to do is click download. And it's going to say, do you want to download it to your computer? Well, we don't need to because we've already got it on our computer. That would be if we had created a pattern ourselves in the Brother Cuts Cut. Are you listening to my computer hissing? It's just because it's the fans going. You, if you'd created something, you would download it to your computer, but we haven't. We want to transfer it to the Scan and Cut. So we're just going to select that button there. It says the Scan and Cut transfer is ready. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. When this first happened to me, I was like right now what and it took me a while so I wanted to show you how that comes about because it did take me a while it might not take you a while you might all be more tech savvy than I am but where we go on our scan and cut you can see here it says retrieve data now you've seen me do this a million times on USBs but normally I tell you to go here which is your USB and I'm going to say you can see all my Phyllis cat hair sorry I'm going to say go to your computer and retrieve it from here and that should bring me up with my pine trees as it loads. Now it's going from the internet, so it takes a little bit longer than the USB, but there is all my pine trees. And that's so clever, right? Such a quick system. So all we're doing from start to 
end is open in scan at the workspace, click your SVG button, choose the file you want, download, press the uh, scan and cut, and then just retrieve from your computer, and it's there. That's so clever. Now your alternative to that, and I will show you it because I want to show you all the ways you can do it for those of you who are brand new. You can go to a supermarket and buy what are known as dongles, USBs, if you like, but they're blank. They've got nothing on them, okay? So this one obviously is a carnation one, but you would buy a blank one. And they come at different um, prices and they come, you can buy them in supermarkets and they come with different amounts of memory on them. If you get the bigger ones, you could put loads of USBs on there. You might get a smaller one and you might just get a couple on there, but it makes life easier. Now I don't have one plugged in and I don't have a blank one, but I will show you how to do it. So if I go to here and I go into this file, if I had a USB placed in there and I had Miss Taz is looking at me going, we can't see, we can't see what you're doing. There you go, there's not much to see at this point anyway. If I had a USB in there, I could drag it onto that USB. Now, if I go to, if I can get my mouse to come down here, on a Mac, it's Finder. And it's got a list of things that I can put in there. There's here. So if I had a dongle plugged in, it would be there. But I don't have a dongle plugged in. But all I would need to do is drag that across to that dongle and it would load onto it. Your alternative is to open it, select one of them, and then select Command A or Control A and it will select all of them and you just copy and paste it, which is Control C for copy, Control V for paste. Easy. Now, my advice, take it, leave it, it doesn't matter because you can, you can retrieve this information endlessly. It's on your account. And um, if you've set up an account with Carnation Crash, you can go in any time and collect that. If you've got a USB, a blank USB sitting at home, a dongle, or you want to buy it, it's probably the easiest way because you can just whack that into there. It's kind of easier. But it doesn't really matter because if you've set up an account with Carnation and you've purchased something, it's always going to sit on your account forevermore and you can just download it whenever you need to and get it over there on Wi-Fi. So you've got both options. I wanted to give you both options. I think it's important that you've got uh, a full knowledge base on how to get everything where you need it to be. So, uh, you know, I hope that helps and I hope it kind of, you know, makes it work. So let's have a look. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Just seeing what you're all saying and make sure I'm collecting your questions. Uh, I think we're okay. Alison, will they be phasing out USBs in favor of ECMs? So USBs in favor of ECMs, no. They'll still be bringing out the USBs. Um, the USBs are there because it's your, it's just easy access, isn't it? So this is, this is mine and this is, this is genuinely mine. I just keep it here because obviously we use them a lot. So where I've got all mine sitting and I've got them here, to me, for me personally, it's super easy for me to just grab this and chuck it into my machine and use it. However, on the digital marketplace, what I can do on the digital marketplace, which again is easier, is scroll through when I'm looking for a specific item. So, you know, and not all of us have got all of the USBs. So it sort of makes it easy that way. Will they, will they phase out the USBs? can't see it anytime soon would they fade out cds did we think they were going to fade, fade out records no but they did so you know we won't say forever but certainly at the moment there's no intention of that happening so once we've managed to get it over there we roughly know obviously how to cut but let's just i'm not going to start cutting stuff out particularly at the minute but i will show you how to line up your vignettes just so you've got some ideas so we know how to cut already, but I will just make sure for those of you who are brand new, if you've just got into all of this, how to do it. So I'll put this one on here. And this one's going to take longer to cut anyway, because it is a detail cut. The reason I know it's a detail cut is right in the corner of this piece of paper. It says DC. DC means detail cuts. Uh, <laughs> Alison records are making a comeback about three times the price. I know, right? I've got the best record player in the world in Yorkshire, which I'll be collecting soon, and it's in a cabinet from 19... 
68, I think, and it's the Asus thing. Right, Taz, I'm moving. She told me I have to tell her in advance when I'm moving because last time I dropped my mic and it was all a disaster. So I'm just going to head over to the scan and cut. Um, right, so first of all, I want to look and see if I can find my sheet with everything on and just remember what this was called. This is why this is so important. Uh, it was something treats, wasn't it? Christmas treats. So I can see it there. So I know where to find it on here. So I'm just going to whip onto my computer. I won't show you all this. You don't need to see it all. Uh, actually, I will show you because why not? I'm going to select all of this because I don't want it. So I'm going to get rid of all of that and delete it. Okay, that's gone. And then let me try and get rid of some of that glare. Going to go into SVG. My mouse is slow. Choose a file. And I'm going to take this back to a hint of pine. And I am looking for Christmas treats. So there it is. SVG. And we'll do detail cut. I'm not actually going to cut it, guys, but just to show you how I get it there, just to give you a refresher. Upload. OK. Then I'm going to go to download. And I'm going to send it to my machine. Scan and cut transfer. It's that fast. It's now on my machine. The re way I know to check that, just to show you, is to go back to my scan and cut. And when I look at this, if I get rid of this, so to get rid, I'm just going to press my home button. It's going to say, are you OK to so delete it all? Yes, I absolutely am. Now I'm going to retrieve data and then I'm going to retrieve it from the computer, not from the USB, from the computer. And my Christmas pudding and all will appear. Super quick and easy, right? So clever, isn't it? Technology is just ridiculously clever, I think. I'm just going to place this in. I do know that I don't have enough space for this to feed in and out. It keeps getting caught, but I'm only doing this to show you anyway. Press your chessboard. That just feeds your mat through. Then it spits it out. A little bit. I'm just going to try and put this here so it doesn't disappear. We'll try. And then I want to scan it. So you're going to press your oven door. You've got your little oven door symbol in the middle. Press that. And then I'm going to press start. And it's just going to take a photo of what's on my mat. Takes it straight through. And then it'll spit it back out. Uh. <laughs> I caught it. And it takes a photo. And you can see it there. How do we match it up? How do we know it's exact? In that corner, we've got to match up. So we've got a red bounding box that you can see here. We need that to match up to the black line that goes around our vignette. So we're going to go to edit. We're going to press the magnifying button at the top. And then that's 200%. So we want to make it bigger and we're going to take it down again here. That's going to give me 400%. And now I can see my corner exactly. And you can see that I'm off kilter there, that it's not quite right. OK, so I need to make it right. And we just play with those settings. Now, I think my black line is showing with some numbers through. So I actually think mine's actually about in the right place here, but I'll just play with it a little bit more. Take it to about... Let's see, there, we're getting there, about there, and then one in, I'm about right. So all I would do at this point is say, okay, I'm happy with where it is, and okay, and okay, and then I press select, and I press cut, and it's going to go, and now I'm, oh, there you go, I press start. Now I'm not going to cut it. We cut one this morning, there's no need to cut one again. You know the process of cutting, you know it's going to cut out all the little pieces. So I won't set that going because it's just extra noise that you don't really need. Um, but that's how you do it. So I'm just very inelegantly sitting back down again. It's not easy to sit on this chair. Just letting you all know. So these are all your vignettes. Now this doesn't include your backing papers. This is just that one USB, it's huge. And I've used a lot of those as well. Um, your backing papers are separate, so you can imagine how big the USB is. And I think that's the thing. I think if we were to say for every USB, this is what you're getting, and we were to bring out that massive list, that massive pile of papers, we'd immediately be like, ooh, that is a lot. And it is a lot. Um, you get so much more on USBs and I love them for it. I'm going to try and do two really quick demos. Now, I might only get one done, but we'll see. 
but I want to try and do two. The first one I want to do is the quick Christmas cards. On this Christmas USB, they've got three of these and they're corkers for making really quick, really simple Christmas cards because all your shapes are cut for you. And I'll show you that really fast. It's super, super easy. Uh, uh, Eileen says, can I use this on a CM machine with cable to transfer? Absolutely, Eileen, yes. Don't worry about being late to the party. That is absolutely fine. Um, yeah, of course you can. It's absolutely fine. It's just with the um, internet, obviously, it's easier, but you know, or it's exactly the same process that you've been doing whenever be, you've been using Brother, uh, what Canvas Workspace to get it over there. So yeah, it's absolutely fine. So one of the files on here is this. That's what it looks like. It cuts that way. And that is your card base. So your card base is taken care of. You don't need to worry about it. And then we get these gorgeous mats and layers on here, which are part of your vignettes. And I'm going to make this really super fast to this card because the whole point is it is a quick card. I'm going to try and get it roughly central. And then I'm going to go in with this one. Somebody is at my door. And then I'm going to place this here. Like so, look at that, isn't that beautiful? I love that so much. This is, how quick are these cards and how gorgeous are they? We're just going to take this tape off and place this here. I won't take too much off. Look at this, prepare yourself. <gasps> how cute is that? How gorgeous is that? Well, that little set of dimension between, look, absolutely beautiful, right? And then my final layer, which is my sentiment essentially for the top. Let's take this, ta this tape off. It's like the quickest demo in history. These are the quickest cards to make and they are gorgeous. So if you're making Christmas cards in bulk, how cute are they? Isn't that just so sweet? No work to do on these, just get them cut out. My advice to you is cut tons of them out, just get them all ready, pop them all in little bags, and then they're ready to go for when you need to make Christmas cards. These are the ones that I would be sending out to like my, ch my children's friends at school or teachers or you know work colleagues where you do a bulk amount not the special ones that we make for relatives and stuff like that but those that we send out to, to sort of big groups of people the, it's a two minute job but they're so beautiful and your recipient isn't going to sit there and think well this is a bulk buy from the supermarket and you get pay 99p and you've got 100 cards you know they're going to know it's something way more special than that and I love that about them because they're so easy to make so that are your quick Christmas cards now I'm going to very quickly make you another demo um, and then we will be out of your hair just remember this is the digital market launch this isn't specifically about this USB but it is the digital market launch I've just dropped some berries, which we might have to get Miss Taz to come in and retrieve. She loves it when I do this, because it's right down by my feet. Uh, so I'm just gonna have a look at the robins that are on here, because I love robins very much, and they have very important, significant uh, meaning to me. I think robins are just the most beautiful thing, and I wanted to use them. But again, I wanted to look at quick cards. Miss Taz, I do apologize. It's the three berries that are just sitting there. Could I? <laughs> Thanks, Miss Taz. Knees aren't built for it. That's not her knees, by the way, that are actually squeaking. Um, it so it might have been. So I'm just going to remove that. Remember, always keep that fold, fold, that score line away from your body before you attach it to the next piece, because that will provide you with that stability. Keep them together. And then once they're together, butt them up against something. Make sure they still remain straight and then just pop them down and you've got this gorgeous placement for your card base. Going in with one mil foam tape here, I've got a matte and a layer, which I pre-stuck last night, just so it was quicker for you. Just a little bit of tonal change and I'm hoping that's central. Not so easy on the overhead, I got to tell you. And then I'm using, look at that. Isn't that so pretty? It's like a mirror really gorgeous now mine might be slightly off kilter you're going to have to bear with me but I am working overhead you'll get the gist of what I mean and I'm just going to place this on here see if I can get it's very very hot in here and the top of my glue keeps drying which is never good let's have a look let's do it this way let's do it the sensible way Miss Bagshaw and take this off 
and just puts them in that way. Right, uh, probably not the, the most sensible, but you know, Bagshaw sensible. It's about as sensible as I ever get. Right, let's take one of these out of here. Tiny amounts of glue. Remember, glue is sticky. We don't need lots of it unless you absolutely want to seal it down. What I will say about glue, I do always say tiny amounts and I still stick to it. Always tiny amounts, you don't need a lot. If you're posting it though, I'd be more inclined to put it in more different areas um, just to make sure it stays stuck down. But for me, just tiny amounts are absolutely fine. I think I've got more on the bottom than I have on the top or vice versa here. So I'm not gonna worry too much. When you're at home, obviously you've got the ability to look over what you're doing. So place it and get it where you want it. I love that frame. I love that so much. I love all of the detail in it. I think it's so pretty. Then I'm coming in, but now I'm using five mil. See the difference now? See how we're getting that chunk? I love the chunk. Pull this forward. We're making a stage. Place this on. And hope I've got it as straight as I can. And then place that on top of there. So I'm building layers constantly. And a little bit here. Place this on here. It's about exact, so I'm pretty much going where I need to go with it. But again, I can't lean over, so you are just going to have to use your imaginations a little bit. Place that there, and then one final layer here. So I'm building up the picture all the time. I'm building height, and I'm building up the stage. Looks like a boat. Place this on. And place it down. I don't think I'm anywhere near straight there. But we'll just place as is. Now I'm gonna turn this this way, just so I've got it kind of on the horizontal. I love the way that sits. It looks like a hat or a boat from an aerial view and I really like it. So let's go in with some holly. It's making me feel a bit festive, Miss Tiz Taz, and you know that I'm not the most festive and you are very festive. Miss Taz, if possible, would like to put her Christmas tree up now. That would be her goal. Huh? It scares her boyfriend a lot because she just wants to decorate. Uh, I normally get mine up on Christmas Eve in a panic Actually, the Christmas tree I get up on, I, I do get up on the 1st of December and I always do it on the 1st of December for the boys because they love it and it's a tradition for us. Right, once we've done that and we've got that curvature that's going through, you can see that I've got this dome. I don't want that, I want the berries to sit sort of further forward so we manipulate. So hold the berries in your hand, push forward. You'll still get the curvature of the leaves, you'll still get the curvature of the berries, but now we are going to sit straighter and that's what we're after achieving on there. Gonna do the same again. You can tell this is a detail cut rather than a speed cut because you can see the lines that I've got. You can see, can you see them? Yeah. So it's just that the difference. If I'd done a speed cut, I wouldn't have any lines on the inside of there. Um, I wanted them on this piece because obviously I'm trying to shape them out more and make them part of the showstopper. But if you just want it as background, you don't need to go to this level of detail. Push this through. Just work your outsides. I'm not working it too heavily. Just little bits. Inside with the berries. Same again. Manipulate it. Hold your berries. Pull this forward so that you get that straightening. Okay? So you don't just have that curvature. You're almost giving it kind of that S shape almost. Take this through and I'm gonna place just on the outsides, just to give it that little bit of decoration, not too much. And I find my pin flare, some on the berries, and some on the leaves. And I'm probably gonna be covering most of the berries anyway, I'm not too worried about it at the moment. Do you see how they curve down the card? Isn't that so pretty? It's that lovely lacing same again here. And then place it. And look at that, so gorgeous. 
Now, what I did earlier, so if you saw at the earlier show, you will have seen me play with Maya and Magnus, uh, the two uh, does and the stag, and this is what we were achieving. So it's this kind of dimensional piece that we have here. So please do re-watch that because what we did is look at how to do that with speed cuts instead of with detail cuts. We still did all the sculpting. If you're interested in learning that, this morning's episode is the one to go to for that. Uh, and we did take a strong look at it. And I re redid that uh, same thing with the Robin. Look how pretty she is. Look at that paper sculpture. How gorgeous is she? The dimension on her is so beautiful. And this is just a little bit of work with a ball tool. So please do go and watch this morning's show. It will teach you everything you need to know about how to achieve that yourself. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you're using, whether you're using a Robin, whether you're using, you know, the stat, it doesn't matter what you're using. The, the principle is always going to be the same. It's always about learning control with your ball tool and the paper and which ball tools you use, that kind of thing. Uh, so have a go. But I just think that that is so pretty as a paper sculpture. I love paper sculpture anyway. So because we go to all of that work to create the showstopper and the reason mine is pre-done is because pin flare takes 24 hours to dry. So I did it last night so that it was ready for me to be able to use in the cards today. Um, but the whole point is that when you're creating a showstopper, the more work that you put into it, the better the result you'll have at the end. So that's why I think the shaping out is so important. I'm going to place a lot of pin flare on here. So you can see I've put quite the amount on. I don't want it to squish. So again, once I've done this, it would be left for 24 hours and I wouldn't touch it. I would need that to be, you know, like concrete essentially. So in these in between here where it's dried overnight are like concrete. There's no movement there. It's absolutely solid. So we need this to be the same. So I'm just going to place her or him just slightly above and kind of just pop her into place. Now she is a full sculpture. So the reason I say to you so often to use your 350 GSM as your base is so important because with carnation, on her own, she's a paper sculpture. She, there's some weight behind her. She is a full sculpture. And so we take decoupage and instead of it just being decoupage because we do something to it and we manipulate the paper, we get that paper sculpture and it's super easy to achieve. But man alive, it looks incredible. So this breast here where you've got this extra layer and it's formed and it's curved and then you've got the pin flare underneath to allow the shadow to come through really gives it that umph and she's beautiful. But what I need to do is put the tree branch in and I want it to tuck into her feet. So what I'm going to do very gently is put a tiny and I mean tiny little daub of glue where I think it's going to land. OK, now it might not land there and that's OK. I only put a tiny daub of glue on. So if it doesn't land there, I'm not in a world of pain. So I'm just going to push and get it to where that glue is and I'm going to use her foot as leverage, as anchorage to just attach that branch and then it will sit proud and it will sit forward. And then I'm going to push her down just to there. And then I've got my little berries and I can add those in just for a little bit of extra colour. Just by manipulating with my fingers. Don't need to use the ball tool. No reason to on these small ones. I'm just decoupaging up the berries. So I'll place this on here and place it through. Prettiness, too much pretty. Same again here. Little bit. Place it under. Oh, oh this towel's it stuck to me. Place it under her body and pin flare allows me to do that and I just get that raise and I'm going to leave it exactly there because I think it's so pretty just as it is with that little twig and the lift on that twig because it's not attached is just gorgeous that shadow play right this is what we look for we look for those elements that allow us that shadow play so you can see here she is utterly gorgeous I love her so much. Can you see the dimension that we're getting on her? If I look at that, 
you can see just how much build we have in that card. And so easy and so simple. But that's a gift because we are giving a full paper sculpture at this point. And that is the beauty of carnation crafts. And that's kind of the gift that we get from them. So just to reiterate, the reason that we're here today is because we are launching the digital market, which is a brand new thing from Carnation Crafts. Today, the deal of the day is that you get three for two. So today's the day to do it. Go and have a look, have a little ferret through. There are two sections on there. There is the commercial artwork and there is the Carnation Originals. The commercial artwork, just to reiterate, is not artwork that is created by Carnation Crafts. It is artwork that they have a license to sell to you at a very cheap price. So they're trying to give you as much value as they can um, because obviously they've paid the bigger price and then they have broken up the files and made them into bigger bundles so that you're getting them super cheap. Um, and then they also have the Carnation Originals and the Carnation Originals are uh, sort of mainly SVGs that come from the USBs over time and they've broken them up into either the full USB or into single elements that you can download from the website. Right, stop pausing on the dog. She's so excited pausing. about that dog. Pausing. Boom. So, uh, with all of that being said, today is the day to go and get your deal of the day. Today is the day to go and ferret as much as you can through that website. Stick with Carnation's website for more stuff that's coming up soon. There's loads and loads that Carnation are going to be providing. Miss Taz is giving you a wave in the background. Are you okay, Miss Taz? Yep. We're going to be back on Monday. She's, she's remembering the days. We are. Are we allowed to say what we are with or not? Something special. Okay. <laughs> We're back with something special on Monday. It's not a die launch, so there you go. Do we know what time 11 o'clock did you say? So join us at Monday on Monday at 11 o'clock for something really, really special, and you are going to really love it, but I'm not allowed to tell you what that is, So, uh, but I do know what it is, and that's exciting. And I'm about to head over to the other studios, so I will leave you to it. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I have, you know, really enjoyed your company as always. Have an amazing uh, evening, and I will see you soon.